will AI enrich our lives or condemn society to inequality and privacy threats? Explore possibilities for AI of the future that fight bias rather than reinforces it. I'm Jen Golbeck. I'm a professor in the College of Information Studies. I'm a computer scientist and I want to talk to you today about artificial intelligence. AI is sometimes presented as like an oracle of truth. It's based in data, it's rooted in math, and so it should be free of all the messiness and complications that we have in human society. But the fact is when AI is working with human data, it learns to replicate past decision making and that means it learns to imitate all of our biases and the problems that we're trying to overcome in society. And because it has this veneer of objectivity, it's easy for people to assume that its answers are probably correct, which can further entrench those problems that we're trying to overcome. I see three big challenges when we look at the role of AI in society. Issues of bias, privacy, and information literacy. On the bias side, there's countless examples of AI discriminating against traditionally marginalized groups. One really clear example of this is in recidivism algorithms. These are commercial AI applications in use in counties across the country that predict the risk that a defendant will reoffend, and they're used in making decisions about parole and probation. But an analysis has shown that these algorithms are profoundly racially biased. They consistently find that black defendants are at higher risk than white defendants to reoffend, even if you control for past criminal history, age, and gender. And it's not that black defendants are inherently higher risk. If we look deeper into those algorithms, what we see is that black defendants are incorrectly classified as high risk when they won't go on to reoffend, twice as often as whites. And the reverse is also true. White defendants are incorrectly classified as low risk twice as often as black defendants. And what that means is that these algorithms are replicating racial biases in the justice system. And even though we know about these biases, they're still being used to make decisions about people's liberty. And in the face of that kind of decision-making, it can feel like you're powerless to do anything. But the fact is, technologically, we can solve these problems. There's a clear example of this from a hospital system that had a program of specialists to assist patients who had complicated comorbidities like diabetes and heart disease and high blood pressure. This program was effective but also expensive, so the hospital introduced an AI algorithm to analyze patient records to determine who to refer to the program. Researchers went in and looked at this algorithm and found that it also was quite racially biased. Black patients had to be much sicker than white patients in order to be referred to the program. And this reflects social differences in the way the two groups access the medical system. White patients tend to have higher healthcare costs because they see more specialists and have more surgeries. So because black patients aren't getting the same level of care as white patients, that was a reason that they were denied access to this program that actually would be really beneficial for them. But the researchers found that once they analyzed that, they could actually correct for the problem. They kept the existing algorithm, but put on another component that predicted future healthcare risks. And when they did that, almost all of the racial bias was removed from the algorithm. So it shows that if we're committed to looking for these instances of bias, not only can we find them, but we can also correct for them. AI also poses a real threat to privacy. Most artificial intelligence systems that are built with human data use information that people never gave permission to feed into those algorithms, and they make intimate personal insights about us that no one has consented to share. AI can find out demographic information and personal things like sexual orientation, religion, if you're pregnant, what your political preferences are. And right now, most of that's used for advertising, but we've also seen it used to try to manipulate elections. In my lab, we built an algorithm that can analyze someone's Twitter feed and on the day they go to their first Alcoholics Anonymous meeting, predict with 85% accuracy if they'll stay sober for 90 days. Now, we published that research because it's scientifically interesting, but we didn't release that algorithm to the public because it's easy to think of ways that it could be misused. Those people using the recidivism algorithms may want to use that in DUI cases. Or you could picture someone's boss or landlord or insurance company using it to deny them access to a variety of social institutions. The fact is that people need to have control over both their data and the way that the insights from AI are used about them, and right now they don't have that power. And both of these challenges also highlight a challenge of information literacy. 
As computer scientists, we see the incremental work on these algorithms in the lab, but as the public, we generally encounter them as very powerful technology that's put in front of us, that we're not really trained on what its capabilities are or what the right ways to use it are. ChatGPT is a great example. This is a tool that has learned to replicate the way humans produce text, and it does it really well, but is very confident in its answers and can trick people into thinking it actually knows what it's talking about when it's really just making good sounding words. Since it became available, we've seen students turn in papers written by ChatGPT that summarize articles that don't exist. We've seen a lawyer submit a brief in federal court written by ChatGPT that made up cases that don't exist. A school library in Iowa took the titles of their books, asked ChatGPT if they contained sexually explicit material, and removed the books if ChatGPT said yes. But the tool doesn't actually know the answer. Yes is just a reasonable human answer, which is what it gives. But because people don't understand the true capabilities of the technology, it's hard for them to use it correctly. This is not to say that AI is bad. It can be profoundly transformatively good, but when it's used in human systems, we have to confront these challenges. The good news is that we can rise to do that, but it'll take a concerted, unified effort from the sciences, engineering, social sciences, humanities, policymakers, and ethicists in order to do it well. If we commit to doing that, not only can we take advantage of all the good power that AI can bring, but we can keep it firmly rooted in the right place in society. Thanks very much for listening and enjoy 100 years of Maryland's homecoming.